Hi, what's up, everyone? And welcome. Like, this is a very, very special. This is a bit last minute um, because Ricky and I, I was on four webinars this week. Ricky's been like, oh, he, he, I think he looks at my schedule and he says, I can 10x that. <laughs> so, yeah. So, anyway, Ricky and I have been buddies for a long time. We've been, you know, we've been working together. We know each other. But um, I've been pestering a little bit, like, come on my channel. I want to interview you. I want to, I want to hear your story because I know you guys, we've got a lot of crossover as well because we've got a lot of people inside Ricky's system and my system. So, you know, there's a big correlation between us and we get on great. So I just thought it'd be really good if we could just get my main man in here on. Exactly. We could have an interview. And he's also agreed to come on the Profit Powerhouse on Tuesday, guys. So he's going to let you know a bit about that a bit later in the interview as well. We're going to go into that. And he's going to give you a free book on how to start your own agency. So this is for you affiliates. Yeah, this is the thing. So, yeah, he's going to give that to everyone exclusively. He doesn't normally give this away. So this is just for us, right? Um, so, you know, this is, this. you know, I'm so pleased to see you, man. And, uh, yeah, I just, I just seen how, I, I, Ricky, Ricky does lives in his, in his Facebook group nearly every single day. He walks around his garden, but his garden's <laughs> massive, right? He's got a big swimming pool. He does his... <laughs> So, I, get my laps in. I get my laps in that way. <laughs> yeah, he does about five laps of his swimming pool yeah, and he does right. these lives. And he, you know, and he, but that's not all he's doing. Like he's on, he's on calls with, he's bringing like new entrepreneurs. He brought me on to, you know, to speak, like some of you guys know me because you came from Ricky. And he's, yeah. you know, and he's, he's been working with Mike Long recently and like some of the, and, and Ricky's like, you've been around, man, haven't you? You've been around, like I was watching you. Or I was watching you and Becca back in the day doing webinars. And that was probably like 2012, 2013, maybe. Yeah. You know, I was doing a lot yeah. of webinars with Becca at the time. But I've been in the industry, dude, since 2003. And I wow. failed horribly. I was a complete wreck in trying to make any money anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I just couldn't, like, crack the code. I so what, what did you start with? So you started about 2012, 2013. So what, what was your first, like, what, what, First of all, what made you go? What did you do before? All right, so I'm a programmer. That's who I programmer. Do. Yeah, okay, I'm yeah. A programmer, right. Yeah. And I would have never thought I would have chose that career, but that started for me in '99. Yeah. And you know, um, basically, I started like really dibble and dabbling in it, yeah. but yeah. I, I took it seriously in 2003 after I had a very bad head trauma. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, in 2001, I was uh, I was in a very bad trauma I'm not, I'm not gonna go deep into it and I almost died that year so it woke me up and it made me realize that you know I need to change my life change my direction I was going down a very wrong path um and then I just got even more heavy into programming but then I learned about internet marketing from a guy uh Derek that's his last name internet marketing center Derek, okay. you're a general I forgot his name now but basically, it was something called Internet Marketing Center. And he was involved with Corey Rudell at the time and another guy, uh, Michael Fortin. And I didn't know anything, I, 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 anything. And I was just looking at like what they did. And they would sell these ebooks online. And that's how they were making a lot of money. But back in that day, it was like sell ebooks, make a million dollars type of things. Right. So, of course, you know, this is, I'm just coming off of uh, my, my trauma. I had a depression and stuff. And, I, and I'm getting my life back together. And then I'm like, I got to get into this, but I don't know how to really program. I, I you know, I, even though I started 99 dibble and dabbling, I wasn't good at any of that. I couldn't build web pages. I wasn't a writer. At that point, I was just a rapper. I used to rap since I'm like 13. So I'm like, you know, I rap, but I, that wasn't helping me make money online. You know what I'm saying? So I had to figure out like what to do. And I spent countless years, I mean, trying to figure it out. Did okay, you, yeah, so yeah. Rubbing two pennies together that I didn't even have. OK, to, to, to get some kind of like result. And I would bang my head against the wall because I couldn't get any result. I just didn't know what the hell to do, you know. Um, and basically, as I progressed, uh, I, I got more to learn like people. Thought, uh, I don't know if you know Sean Casey. No. Those kind of guys. Sean Casey was back in 2003. He had okay. a book okay. called Mining Gold on the Internet. So yeah. I downloaded this book. Okay, It was like $47. I had to borrow money from my mother to get it. I put, I, I, I literally got a binder, printed it all out, and I read it profusely. Okay, I just like dived into the thing. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. This is amazing. I'm, you know, you get all hype and you're like, oh, this is great. I'm going to make a million dollars. And then guess what? I did nothing. <laughs> I did freaking nothing with it. Like I couldn't. I think it's, that's quite a common story, isn't it? We all do yeah. something. When I first turned on Facebook ads, right, I got a result, and I switched them off because yeah. I panicked. <laughs> and that was when Facebook ads cost you ten p. You know, like. Oh my god. Like, 
<laughs> hey, listen, if I can go back with the knowledge I have now, back to that time, it'd be a lot different. But that's yeah, the game. Yeah. Right? We don't get that. We have to learn. So long yeah, story yeah. short is uh, I met Mike for same in 2007. And okay. he was at an event. I spent my rent money to actually go down to that event. My wife now, but at the time was my girl, was like, how are we going to pay rent? And you know, you're doing this stupid internet marketing thing. This is not a career, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't listen. I just said, oh, no, And mind. people are getting that now, aren't they? There's still got, people out there that just don't understand I it. got in my car and I just drove and I was like yeah. thinking the whole way, like, you know, is this going to work or not? I'm going I'm to make something work, right? So you've got to prove it point, wrong, right? That's the thing, isn't it? We always have to prove, to start with, you've got to prove someone wrong. <laughs> you've got to prove it to yourself, yeah, then prove one. someone else wrong, yeah. I had, a, I had some more confidence, though, because I started working for warehouses, building them shopping cart applications. Oh, I got okay. up programming. 2006, I ran a, a store called Candy Shot Glass because the warehouse company I was working for had like uh, they, they were, I don't, in the U.S. There's a big chain called Spencer Gifts. It was in every mall. So that basically I got to work with the warehousing and understand some of the supply manufacturing thing. And then I talked to the supplier and I was like, you got this cool product. Can I get an exclusive on it? And he said, well, you know, exclusives are going to cost you money that you don't have. And that was true. I had no freaking money. So he's like, I'll give it to you on the arm, though, because I know how good of a programmer you are. So I sat up to five, six o'clock in the morning every night on the side of my other job to just build this candy shot glass uh, website, which was a shopping cart. OK, I, I, you know, so I built custom shopping carts. And then in that, that year was 2000, end of 2006, I did like 12,000 in sales from it. That was the biggest money I ever made. You know, in the, in that time, twelve thousand sales or twelve thousand dollars. No, twelve thousand dollars worth of sales. Twelve thousand dollars. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, me and Crystal at the time, and I was my wife. She, we would like take uh, like like shopping bags, like like you know the big contractor garbage bags, yeah. and we take it to the post office, and we're dumping off candy shot glasses. These little molds. We thought we were rich. We thought we were like, oh, we cracked the code. You know. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, what I learned the hard way, CVS, the pharmacy in the United States, they must have seen what I was doing. They bought out all their stock, just wiped me out completely. Took an exclusive, bought the rest of the inventory. That that Christmas, I seen it all over the place in CVS. I'm like, mm. I, was, I didn't have enough money to buy. It was like six more months. I only made $12,000. My profit was probably like eight or whatever. And I was like, you know, uh, I, I'm just whatever. But, yeah. but when I went down to that event, okay, I at least had that that happened to me. I had that confidence. And I was like, you know, I can do this. So I took a calculated risk on my rent money, even though she was mad and she's seen the failures from the business. I was like, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to just keep on going. That's why yeah. I met my same. And then I was a programmer. He hired me on and you know, the rest is history. I learned a lot from, from him. And he was like my mentor. And then basically 2011, I just left and I just did my own thing, you know? Yeah. So that's, I love that story, man. So if we, if I can just go back a little bit. So between, obviously we're not going to go into your head trauma, but between that time and when you kind of hooked up with Mike Full Same and you were doing your stuff we were selling, would you, would you be able, because there's going to be a lot of people obviously starting in business yeah, yeah, and yeah. you and I teach a lot of people that, you know, we've got a big percentage of people that are starting out, they're trying to make it, they're trying right. to get somewhere. And I think always it's that case of like, what is it? What's Ricky got? What's Paul got? And I don't think you and I, I think we're special, you know, I think everyone's special, but I don't think you and I, I don't think anyone can not do what you and I can do. I am a firm believer that, but I also think sometimes people like to relate. They want to go, well, what is it? So what do you think, what was the one thing that gave you confidence? Like when you, on that journey, what was the one thing that you went, ah, right, that, that, now I know, now I've, because really you're, you're flying blind a lot, aren't you? Right. Well, yeah, um, yeah. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. So, yeah. Well, you know what? You know what? That's a good question because mm. you know, for a while, like say from 2003 to like 2006, seven, I thought I had no value. I didn't yeah. believe in myself. I had that no. That was me as well. Yeah, at one point. You no, know, yeah. I like you know. I'd see all these people offer these eBooks and everything else, right? And they were making money that way, teaching stuff. And I felt like I had nothing to teach. What am I going to teach about my 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 uh, rehab days or drug days or alcohol days or you know all the shit that I was in when I was a teen? What, what am I teaching? Right. So like I always like beat myself up about like how do I do this? So I looked into affiliate marketing, okay, where I could sell other people's products at the time, and it was a big opportunity. But then I, had, I then I hit I hit a wall. How do you get traffic? Yeah. I mean, so Sean, uh, Sean Casey was like. Okay, well, you need to find a school of hungry fish and feed them what they want. And I'm like, all right, well, I got what they want. How the hell do I find a school of hungry fish? And this is before Facebook was big and, you know, all that, you know, and Google AdWords was out. I mean, you know, it was AdSense. 
And I'm going into forums. I'm reading and reading and reading. I'm trying to figure it out. So that further like hurt my confidence level because I come, I came to the point where, you know, well, first of all, you're living paycheck to paycheck. I'm doing different programming jobs and, you know, and then, you know, what really changed for me, I mean, later in my career is when I stopped being money driven and I started being value driven. And I really understood how to provide value to a market rather than let me just try to extract all the money out of a market. Because as much as I chased, when I had to chase money at the time was because I was broke, depressed, non-confident. Okay. I actually was digging myself deeper in a hole without even realizing it. So what snapped for me was when I had mini successes, like I programmed the first thing that I thought I couldn't program. That was like a, a mini success to me. Or when I built candy shot glass, falling asleep on my computer nights at a time, that was a mini success to me. Or when I said, you know, there's the, there's the event I need to go to. I got to be at this event. Okay. And then I, and I, and I took my rent money and I said, screw it. I don't even care. I'm going to pay rent next month. I could just go wait. And I said, I'm going to go there. When I got there, I was confident. And I was like, that's another mini success. So like these little mini stepping stones definitely helped me progress my career and give me the confidence level, but it's not like an overnight thing at all. Like I failed for seven, eight years before I even made any sort of money. Yeah. And I can really you know, I can relate to your story too, Paul, where you're just sitting there on webinars or you're, you know, you're trying to make, make ends meet to yourself and you're figuring, trying to figure out the ways. That was me for years, trying to like look at, I was on different trainings, reading different courses. You'd, you'd be... You'd be like, like disgusted, not disgusted, but you, if you seen what I got on the left side over there of my internet marketing notes and books and magazines, <laughs> and, uh, not to mention probably 15 hard drives full of crap. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Trying Same to figure yeah. it out. Okay. <laughs> like guys, like, you know, you just have to have, okay, look, motivation is one thing, but you have to have drive. So, yeah, I mean, just to cl clarify what Ricky was talking about with my story, I think most people know it, but if, because this is going to be on YouTube, obviously you guys are going to be, some of you won't know me or Ricky even, you're just coming here. So yes. um, my story is that I would sit and record, I would sit and do webinars to myself <laughs> for about <laughs> two years. I would literally hop on a webinar. I didn't have a list. I didn't know how to run ads. I didn't have a YouTube channel. <laughs> well, I did have a YouTube channel, but it didn't, didn't have an audience. Um, so I would do these webinars and I would basically put out an ad and no one, a couple of people would sign up, no one would turn up. And then I would basically, I would just do it. I thought, right, I'm just going to keep doing it, doing it. And then, um, and, and initially as well, I was, um, I, I, I did a hundred webinars recorded. I never actually did a live webinar. So I was going, I was sending ads to a recorded webinar, but I was recording this webinar over and over and again. And what I used to do is I used to just sit and watch it. And I used to think I'm, I'm the buyer, right? I'm not me anymore. I'm the buyer. I'm sitting here watching this. Would I buy it? No, no. <laughs> no. People now think I'm good on YouTube. I'm good at interviewing. But all of that stuff, like, you know, my first YouTube, um, um, and I'm not saying that everyone thinks that, so I'm, <laughs> I'm not trying to be beginning, but some people do, right? But the thing is, is that I'm only saying that because, like, my first my first ever YouTube video, I was like, um, I had a big light shining on my face because I didn't realise you could sit in front of a window or have... I didn't have any of the lighting, you know, all that sort of stuff. And then I, you know, I, it just came and over time, suddenly I'm now working with Ricky and I've, I'm friends with Mike because all yeah. these kind of things fall into place, but it's not like Ricky said, it's not an overnight thing, but you're just going back to your point. So you're, you, what, there wasn't a big aha moment. It was just like little increments that just kept it building. Was. Yeah. It okay. wasn't like an aha, something just clicked for me. I just, you know, it, like you, you just said that you record hundred webinars and listen to it. That's drive. Yeah. That's freaking drive all right and that's why where you are right now is where you are if you gave up you probably be still working for somebody else not and then just thinking about your dream thinking of what you could have did like yeah. you're not done you know you know it doesn't really matter what age bracket you are trying to tell people like you're not done yet like yeah. you can you can still move forward you can still push yourself and you know uh this is what i teach on another one of my groups i teach that motivation i not just motivation but optimization of your mindset optimization of your scheduling optimization of your execution optimization of your health optimization of your your relationships and your resting so that you have all the elements in place to be an animal no matter what age bracket you are, no matter how much drama you've been through, what kind of things that are put you down, that's in the past. And if you keep letting that haunt you, I had my past haunt me for years. 
My past definitely haunted me for years. Sometimes it still haunts me, but I learned how to put that way behind me and, and, and just keep it moving, you know? Yeah. yeah, I mean, life's a struggle, isn't it? I mean, I had a weirdest dream the other night. My two comma club, somebody shot it through the window right, in my dream. And I woke up and I had to run in this room and check it was okay. I was like, was that a dream? <laughs> Because that's the thing, I, wait, I wanted to get that for years and years and years. But, yeah. you know, it's kind of like one of those weird dreams. And you get, you know, like as you guys progress, you know, Ricky will have had it. I've had it. You get imposter syndrome, right? Because you're helping people, but you're also making money and you're kind of like, oh, is this all good? Am I? But, you you know, you, you just you have to kind of combat lots of different things. But as you know, it's kind of like Tony Robbins says this really well. As you go to the next level, then comes the next set of problems. As you go to the next level, then. But you've got to keep moving forward, right? Because obviously that's life, that's growth. And um, and that's what I think is interesting. So what we'll do is we'll fast forward from that because I think that's, that's yeah. an amazing story. Thank but um, I know that a lot of people here, especially guys in, in our joint network, but like nobody who knows you, you started Slingly. And when you started Slingly, they, now, guys, this is print on demand. So, um, you know, Ricky, like, he didn't just, like, start putting ads to a, you know, et, um, no. I'm trying to think of uh, one of the print on demand companies. Stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, you, I knew you, about- you developed a software, right? Yeah, this is a full-blown automation platform that hooks up the Shopify, Etsy, WooCommerce, Amazon, Groovecart, Gearbubble. I mean, what we do is we pr- we produce product lines. Like, you see this shirt I'm wearing right now? I did this for Michael Long, OMG. Okay, yeah. That's one man gang. Um, this is an optic they had. We took it. We put it on design. We, we created a product line with it. And yeah. this is a product we're working on, whatever. But the, the point of the story is, is that I got more heavily invested in merchandise. Yeah. And yeah. I really, like, didn't look at it as, like, oh, let me just run an ad to Facebook and make some money off a T-shirt. I did it first when I was learning it. But as I understood, like, how merchandise worked, I you know, we, me and uh, one of my old partners, we built two warehouses in Tampa. And we did our own print on demand operation. This is back in probably two. 2016 yeah, and yeah. we just ran so much volume to it that we couldn't even handle it so that what we had to do was we had to make deals with other manufacturers like big print houses the ones that went right now are completely solid i mean the guys like Sunfrog shirts uh shine on jewelry uh i got you know gear bubble um you know uh fulfills some of my stuff too as well so i got really good alliances but that didn't come overnight neither I went broke three times building my software. I'm talking about some bad decisions I made with partners or just bad relationships and just really, things really. didn't go the right way. And you know what? I, I could have just quit. There was many times I was building the software. I just wanted to quit. I got so sick of doing it. And then I was like, you know what? There's something here. Let me just keep doing it. And I did. And I made it work and I made it work and I made it work. And, you know, so what I've done uh, recently within the past four to five months is I traveled and I went to these warehouses that I'm working with. And I went to some of my bigger partners like Mike Fulsane with Groove Digital. And, you know, and we met up and we masterminded some things. And I'm like, you know, there's a synergy here where we can help a community really, really big in a big way by allowing them to, you know, have a a branding opportunity, create their own, not their only their own merchandise, but have the opportunity to provide merchandise out to a community in really um, a branded way. So we'll explain about that in a minute, but that that software, you know, helps, you know, thousands and thousands of people, okay, through the years. I mean, it's been in development now, Paul, for like six, six, six years, I think, six and a half years. Wow. Yeah. yeah, and we are going to talk about that, guys, because because the, the book that we just showed at the start, that's going to be what Ricky's done. But I just wanted to go back on a couple of things. So your your Slingly came out as a result of you doing print on demand with the services that were already available, but you were yeah. blowing them up too much and they couldn't handle it. Did I get that right? Well, yeah, well, basically, we we started building Slingly because we needed inventory management. Yeah, we right. Gotcha. Way. Yeah, yeah. What happened was we're working with designers in the Philippines and we're working with uh, remote, you know, um, VAs, virtual yeah. assistants. Yeah. And there was a lot of screw ups. OK, our right. images didn't come back the right way. Our colors for our ads were off. They weren't just right. So we started building a system that we can manage our own inventory, auto generate our own ads and keep everything tight so that there was less human interaction. And we yeah. put like pipelines together in systems. So we knew, OK, if a design was finalized, now it gets uploaded to Slingly. We create a hoodie. We create a mug. We create a, a, v, a V-neck shirt, a unisex shirt. And that's all in one click. You basically yeah. click a button. That's all created. 
create it. And then we had, you know, another section where you can upload it to all these different platforms. At mm. first, it was just Shopify. We were using Shopify. Then we branched out to Amazon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, eBay's on the way. We branched out to Amazon and Etsy and all that other stuff. But that came later. Okay. Yeah. First, there was a need for our own business. How do we manage our print on demand inventory in a, in a in a very good way so that we we cut out less human mistakes? And then instead of going up in a Shopify store and putting variations and colors and sizes, you know what? We press one freaking button; it's done within seconds. So that was the goal because we had to you know get these shirts out to the market as fast as possible. Yeah. But then the table started flipping a bit, okay? And Facebook started getting a little bit more, you know, a lot more expensive and eating more. So I had to work deals out with manufacturers to lower their prices for me so we can keep the software marginal enough for people to make money. And then people were just getting, you know, now with Facebook, people getting banned left, right, up, down, sideways. Yeah. So yeah. we went to the platforms a few years ago, like Etsy and Amazon, because they got buckets of traffic. So now you can use Slingly the way that you would normally use it, but then you can upload it to Amazon and take use of their traffic or upload to Etsy, have their traffic. But like, but it's growing yeah. bigger, dude. And like, and it is, a, and this is what I want to talk about in a little bit. Yeah, that's really cool. I mean, the thing is, is that um, that blew up, didn't it? Like a few years ago, I can remember everyone was everyone was focusing on SEO. Everyone yeah. was focusing on ranking stuff on Google, and that was the thing for years. And I can remember Becca, you know, who you've worked with. Becca yeah, yeah. just flipped like that, went straight into e-commerce, print on demand, everything else. He just went like that. One, and he made millions doing that because he literally just saw it and he went there. But exactly. as you say, he was because everybody was blowing up with that, that's obviously the downside to that's going to be the ads, isn't it? The ads are going to blow up and that that's means exactly that's going to be There was too much, like Facebook, you know, has ad inventory and they don't want us you know, you know, like even though I spent millions on Facebook, I'm small fry to a Pepsi that's going to spend a hundred million on Facebook. You know, so they really want just the brand advertisers on Facebook right now for branding awareness campaigns. They don't want the little webinar dudes or the people that are doing small print on demand. I mean, they want people that are going to spend a big budget with them to please their investors, and that's what it's become. Yeah. Okay. And you know, and there's, there's other, there's other advertising opportunities. SEO is now a blue ocean. SEO used to be like, you know, like back in 2011, I was murdering SEO. You were murdering SEO, right? Like we had, we had it dialed in. Mm -hmm. Then when Google came out with penguin and Donald duck and goofy <laughs> and, and giraffe, right. Knocked us all out. Right. So we had to go to the paid advertising world. You know? <laughs> I think it was Donald duck that done it. <laughs> Donald quack too much. That was it. It was his fault. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah exactly yeah and uh you know that's yeah i mean i mean when you say i had it dialed in i probably had it a temp dialed in and i was still killing it. <laughs> you know i didn't really know what i was doing but it was so easy wasn't it for so many years but, yeah back in 2006 when i was doing the candy shot class bro you could just put a title like a keyword in a title you ranked like it was like so stupid easy one but backlink I, one backlink from another website that didn't even have any backlinks i wasn't even backlinking <laughs> i wasn't even backlinking i didn't even yeah. know what i was doing bro oh you weren't even doing that <laughs> No, not at all. In 2005, I was just like, all right, this looks cool. I'll put this together. I wasn't, dude, I wasn't even doing research. And I was coming up to the top. Yeah. Like, it, it was definitely, definitely Yeah, different. easy times. Because most people weren't aware for quite a few years. When I started in 2002, most people, you know, most people weren't really aware that the internet was going to be a big thing. I know that the internet existed, but I think people were still a bit like, <laughs> well, is it, you know, is it just for one thing? You know, is it really going to be... And I think it took a little while. And then when everyone started cottoning on again, that was when, you know, Donald Duck got in. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> Donald Duck and the Crow Crew, Goofy, and everybody came in. <laughs> so, yeah. So, anyway, guys, we got Ricky covered on our profit powerhouse on Tuesday, Whoa. right? Now, Brilliant. what we're going to do today, right? What we're going to do, I'm going to put a link up on the screen now. Okay. You just go to tripfunnels.com forward slash profit, right? Now, if you're already registered for the Profit Powerhouse, you might want to register again. I'll tell you why, because we're switching out the page. We're going to send you to an exclusive page where this training that we've got coming up on Tuesday, right, Ricky's going to give you a free book, okay? So when you opt in, you, you, he's going to give you the book on the thank you page. That book there, you're going to get that. Okay, now the thing is, is that on Tuesday, he's going to talk you through it all. He's going to show you how to put all of that into action now ricky wants to talk a little bit more about this so i'm going to shut up and i'm just going to hand you over to ricky because he's got a lot to cover on this but the first thing i'm going to say guys is if you are doing affiliate marketing if you don't even know what an agency is i'm holding my hand up 
Ricky got me in his agency a few weeks ago and I had a look at it and I started to figure it all out. But basically, <laughs> it, it, the long and short of it is, Ricky will tell you more, is that when you send traffic in, you're going to have a ton of affiliate links that's going to make you money. <laughs> so that's hey, my take on it, but it'll tell you, it'll ecosystem. tell you that I've got that all wrong. <laughs> it's a whole ecosystem, right? Look, whole so, ecosystem. It, like, put it this way. It took me the past six years and the past five, five, four to six months to even be able to bring this to you. Okay. And the, and the thing was, is that if I didn't build up these warehousing relationships, these partner relationships, these traffic deals and understand, you know, down to the, like, you know, the granular level of how to run traffic successfully, I wouldn't be able to bring an opportunity like this. All right. And I really sincerely mean that. So I wrote a, so I wrote a book about it. Okay. It's called touchless agency, how to instantly tap in to an exploding multi-trillion dollar industry without owning any e-commerce products or any e-commerce store. Now, that may hit you in the head. You're like, wait, 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 Ricky, how am I supposed to tap into e-commerce without doing e-commerce? That's what you're going to learn. So you're going to want to go to the page that Paul puts on this on this, uh, on this this video and go download your copy. It's 37 pages. It'll probably take you about 20, 30 minutes to read. It's, you know, one guy said that he didn't even blink while reading it, okay? So, but like... It's really, you know, my take on what's going on in the market, why, how I identified a really big opportunity with low amounts of competition and how you can get in. And we're going to explain about, uh, explain about it on Paul's profit training, right? You call it the profit hour, right? Profit so powerhouse, do, yeah. Okay, so the profit powerhouse, we're going to get on and we're going to explain the whole opportunity. But do yourself a favor, go download that book right now, okay? You can get yourself a PDF copy, go get it, grab a, a nice cup of coffee, Coffee, Links um, you there. know, sit, sit on your porch or whatever and, and read it through. It's a good read. I uh, really get detailed and show you a lot of good stuff. All right. So you think you'd enjoy it. But um, so I got Paul. So Paul, just a piggyback on what Paul was saying. All right. So let me let me let me show you something, you know, without blowing the whole thing up. I'm going to I'm going to transition over here quick. And Paul, do you see my uh, whiteboard? Yes, indeed. All right, so I made this like cool little whiteboard thing. So I can actually draw my hand now. Right. So basically. There is a big opportunity. We got to understand, okay, that I did the research. There's 2.1% growth over across the whole globe from the U.S., London, okay, all the way down to Asia that are coming online to be your competition, okay? They're coming online for e-commerce. They're growing. This is right from Shopify's. Uh, data in, in late 2020. So the pandemic literally made a big boom of a rush. They basically said that in three months, okay, we had 10 years growth. In three months, yeah. 10 years growth. That is absolutely bonkers, right? So now you may say, well, Ricky, doesn't that mean saturation? It does in sort of a way because the way that the, ad, the ads work, say you're on Facebook, is they have inventory. And inventory is basically where you're bidding on a slot. So as inventory starts to get cluttered out, the price is like CPM, cost per, uh, per, cost per thousands, cost per mille, they get more expensive. And that's to kick other advertisers out, right? So what do we do in this situation? Okay, this is what we do. Okay, we need to build an opportunity around this, okay, which is touchless agency. It allows you to tap into this ever growing, they said by uh, by 2024, 6.2 trillion US dollars will be spent online in, on, in online e-commerce. So what we want to do is we want to be in the position to sell, you know, the shovels, the shell, the, the, the fork picks. And we want to give people a really unique opportunity to get in on this big boom. However, there's another play at work here. The other play at work here is since the pandemic, you know, there was 14% and um and job job loss okay just last year right so just job loss in the u.s that has nothing to do with um with uh, uh the whole world but now it's you know six seven percent it's getting a little better but still that made a rush of people coming online to become your competition they want to learn how to make money online they want to learn how to um let me uh, flip this back over here okay they want to they want to learn how to make money online 
They want to learn how to build e-commerce. They want to learn how to do affiliate marketing. They want to learn all that. So these guys become your competition. So what I what I pinpoint in the market is a way for you to get in, okay, at the right time with all the tools necessary that these people do need in a really um, organized way with product congruency. So that's Touchless Agency. You're going to want to get all the details in this book, and I go through it. And please join us for the for the profit power hour and let's uh and let's get this thing going because it's very very important and i'm doing something special for for you paul and your crew all right so uh definitely be on that training i'll explain a lot more but there's a big big chance for us all right and you know we got a lot of people that are involved a lot of good manufacturers a merchandising opportunity it's not even just an affiliate opportunity this gives you okay the ability to become um, a, a business in demand you're going to be in demand Everything that I'm giving you on this training, you will need to sell to the people, okay, that are rushing online right now that are starting from zero. And you'll be in a better position in the next couple of months if you if you take this seriously now than everybody else that doesn't. Okay. So I identified that and that's what I gave Paul to work on too as well. He's excited because he finally understands the whole big opportunity. Took me a, a couple of months to get this pulled together, but seriously, six years of building software, talking to thousands and thousands of people, teaching people, you know, you know, fl flying around San Diego, Vegas, teaching people on stages and stuff like that to really like understand like where this market is, where this market's headed and how, you know, and if I didn't go through all that shit since 2000 three okay to eat and i if i didn't have that drive and i gave up i wouldn't be here today i'd be still on the sidelines probably kicking myself in the butt for not doing anything and that's what we can't do we can't sit on the sideline you know what i'm saying yeah i i think this is i mean you told me as well you were recently uh you were over in florida with mike mike for same yeah. mm -hmm. and he was you know he was telling you you know what you're doing and everything he was confirming everything like this is the future of of e-commerce and the other thing as well i saw on the news the other day you know, they were going crazy about e-commerce. They said, look, you know, all the shops are shut. Everyone thought commerce was going to die. But of course, everybody was at home. Amazon went bonkers, oh, right? Oh, it just went bonkers. Yeah, because the dude. thing is, is that what you're going to do if you're sitting at home all day? You know, you've got an app, one click. <laughs> you know, you oh, my God, it's dangerous with that. She got the one click on trigger. <laughs> like, I'm like, wait, wait, I got boxes coming this way. <laughs> yeah. Like that's ridiculous, stuff, but that's what it is. Like Amazon took over whole stool for a uh, whole whole food stores in the US. And they bought the whole chain, and their goal with that is to take over the grocery in industry. They're also yeah. looking into uh, automated telemedicine. I mean, Amazon is a, is gonna become a global leader um, you know, around the way, and there's nothing we can actually do about it other than work within our boundaries and provide good opportunity for people to, you know, take use of all the technology and all the opportunity that they may not see. You know, some people are opportunity blind. They may not see the opportunity when it's right there in front of their face. So it's guys like me, guys like Paul, guys like Mike for same that identify these things and want to bring the opportunity to you so that you could see it. And once you actually realize it, then that's when the light bulb goes off. Like, aha, this makes sense. This is logic. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. So guys, Ricky, I know Ricky's got like a ton of stuff. He's got, oh, he's got loads of meetings lined up for the day. So the fact is, guys, we're going to wrap this up, but the fact is, is that, right, this is it. Go and grab Ricky's book, right, and turn up live on Tuesday. Now, if you can, if you don't turn up live on Tuesday, on this specific call, we're not promising a replay because I've had to score. Because <laughs> Ricky, basically, one of the things that's great about the agency, right, is that we've got one of our products in there. Ricky asked for it, and we created a brand new product just for Ricky. Amazing. He had to twist my arm. So now I had to twist his arm. <laughs> I had to, like, go, can you do something special for everyone on this live call and he said i can do it on the live call right but we're not promising anything further so the fact is you've got to go live on tuesday it's at 5 p.m bst for the U for uk 12 noon est or east eastern time et you know like normal so it's a normal time that we do it if, you, if you're already in the system but if you are already pre-registered just go and register again to get the book because you'll get the book straight away as soon as you basically go in you'll, you're going to see a different page this week right then we're going to put it back to the original page so this page this week you go to tripfunnels.com profit it's on the page on the on the right now here or in the in the description or if you're watching this on facebook it'll be around you'll see it 
and then you'll be you'll be able to get the book right straight away, so you can start to understand. Yeah, get the book. You yeah. love the book, guys. You I started know. reading it just before, and I was like, "Whoa!" Like you say, you, I, like I, Ricky was like buzzing me. Are you ready, man? I'm like reading his book. <laughs> 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 awesome. So yeah, no, guys, come, to, really come to the show, guys. It's going to be amazing. This is going to be one of the best. I mean, I'm going to go all out on here and say this is going to be one of the best things you oh, guys are going to see this year because this is a really, really big opportunity right now. It's really exciting. And you're going to learn a ton, right? Ricky's really good at doing what he does and he's going to show you a lot of stuff. Um, you know, I'm going to pretty much not be on there. I'll say hello to everyone, but Ricky's going to be showing you <laughs> something. So. I'm going to I'm going to give you a very good education so you can logically wrap your head around the opportunity and see if it's something for you. Um, this is not going to be some kind of hard pitch. It's going to be either you want to be in or you want to be out. That's pretty much it. And I just want to leave uh, this with everybody. Um, you know, if you're dealing with confidence issues, okay, what you just need to do is you just need to trust yourself, be yourself. Don't worry about what anybody else thinks about you. Just do something, put your face out there. Okay. Really get out your ruts. Um, and you know, this webinar, I, you know, this training we're going to have, I'm going to help you with that too. I have something called my power initiative baked into it, where I explain about wealth building hustle and consistency and how to wrap your head around a mindset that actually gets productive. So you want to be on this call and I appreciate you, Paul, for bringing me on this interview today. So thank you. Yeah, guys, no worries, man. So yeah, here it is. Here's the link guys, go grab it. And you know, in that book, I'm sure there's a link to Go and get involved in Ricky's community as well, all right? So, you know, whatever happens, get involved in his community. He's he's going to look after you. He's on there every day. His Facebook group is insane. It takes over everything, right? Because Ricky's always doing stuff. So, you know, go go and get involved. He's he's a really cool, uh, really cool guy. One of my one of my good buddies online. And uh, and yeah, I'm really I'm you know I'm I'm looking forward to this on Tuesday. So we're going to let you go, man. And uh, we'll see you Tuesday. Thanks ever so much. Links there, guys. Go do it. Go and get your book now, and we'll see you then. Yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. Later.